This is Dr. Diamond. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Garrison Road in Bradford County. And Dr. Diamond was the dean at Delvale College. And we walked into the uh, hunting camp here. You know, we have a lot of strange little critters up here on the wall and all. And he looks over and he sees this horn. He says, uh, where'd you get that horn? Well, I got it from a guy that was uh, a sea captain. His name was Dwight, which I have a real story on that too. But at any rate, Dr. Diamond re immediately recognized the horn. Go ahead, Doc. Well, Bill, I uh, recognize the horn because uh, it's a, a zebu horn from zebu cattle uh, that's raised mm. in Central and West Africa. And, um, and um, it's a, um, uh, a breed of cows that um, um, uh, you're going to, there's actually two sub races. There's a, Z a zebu rouge and a zebu blanche. One, one means that the, uh, the color of the hair is red, that would be the rouge, and the blanche would be white. And um, uh, they're, they're raised mostly by the Fulani people. The Fulanis are uh, nomad, nomads uh, with their cattle, and that's one of the reasons why they have zebu cattle, because they do very well and can walk long distances, and they're very tolerant to drought, uh, they can, uh, and they have a strictly grass diet, <laughs> and um, uh, also uh, they're a breed of cows. You're gonna, you can recognize them very easily. They have a hump on top of their shoulder, and they have these horns, and uh, and some of these horns. This is really a small one, really. Uh, some of those horns get get quite large, and uh, <clears throat> uh, these um, uh, this breed, particular breed is also. Uh, tolerant to uh, trypanosomiasis, which is sleeping sickness, and also streptotinicos, and that's a disease caused by ticks. And um, so they're, they're a little more tolerant to these than some of the other breeds. Also, um, the Fulani people are kind of interesting people. They take these cattle on what they call a, a, a transhumance. And a transhumance is when they have guides up ahead and, they're, um, and they send um, uh, uh, people back to guide these cattle in certain directions depending upon where the, wa the water is located and where there's grass. And one interesting thing about these Fulani people is that <coughs> they have a... Uh, anthrax is a real problem in certain sections of, um, of Africa and you're going to see anthrax as you know, that's, that's in the ground. And when they their cattle come down with anthrax, um, they quarantine the cattle in a circle, in, in, in an area. And they keep them there until the anthrax runs its course. But while they're doing that, waiting for the cattle to die, they have a certain species of tree that they plant, and they plant it in a straight row for about five to ten kilometers, in a straight row. And uh, I could never find out what the, the uh, Latin name was for that tree. All they could tell me was in the indigenous language, and I didn't mean anything to me. But what that's for is that when it, when it grows, the following years there and after, when the guides are up ahead uh, looking for grass and water, and they see these trees planted in a straight row, then they know that's an anthrax area, and they send word back to the herds and get them going in different directions around that area. So I thought that was an interesting disease control uh, of um, the uh, zebu cattle in that particular part of the world. They're very interesting people. Okay, and thank you very much. And Dr. Diamond, how did you come to find out about that information about the zebu horn? Uh, I worked in Africa for almost 10 years, and um, I worked with these cattle quite a bit. In fact, um, I've, I used to vaccinate them. I was a French veterinarian and I, and we used to go out in the bush, mm. And one of the reasons why we were able to do it is they would never allow a government veterinarian to uh, vaccinate their cattle because they were afraid that the veterinarian was going to report to the government official how many cattle they had and then they would be taxed. Now I was, uh, uh, the Frenchman and myself, we were not government employees and so we um, uh, had a trust with them and they allowed us to uh, vaccinate these cattle. And we had no place to, um, they had no corrals where we could put them in. And they, they made corrals made out of thorn bush. And they would jam the cattle in there. 
and uh, then they would, um, um, one of these guys would jump up on the, the, the neck of the, uh, in front of that hump, and slide <laughs> down over the neck with his legs straddling the neck, and he'd grab a hold of these horns, and then he would twist the head around and flip it over, and then we'd go up and we'd vaccinate it in the rump, and while I was on the ground, and then they reached down and grabbed a handful of cow manure and smeared the back, and that's how we could tell which ones was done and which <laughs> ones weren't done, because we didn't have crayons to mark them over there. So that's how I got familiar with the thorn. That's why I recognized it right away as soon as I saw it. And uh, if you want to get more information about Africa, uh, Dr. Dom has written a book, and it was called... I did what I had to do, and uh, it's uh, available on Amazon.com or in any bookstore in America. All right, well, thank you very much. At Highland Hill Farm, we can ship trees, plants, and shrubs from seedlings and transplants to full-sized nursery stock. We can ship on our trucks, which include F-550s with 20-foot trailers, or we can use common carriers such as tractor trailers and ship tractor trailer loads or partial loads. We ship our seedlings and small transplants by UPS, and we also have planting equipment available for you for large purchasers of seedlings and transplants. So give us a call at 215-651-8329 for your tree and shrub needs. Thank you.